Ladies and gentlemen, this is the state of the scene. What the fuck is up, Warp Tour? State of the scene, the alternative music show at SOTS Podcast on all social media. Sam here with Margos. Here we are. Here they are. Our top 20 albums of 2022, obviously yet to be organized numerically into ultimately uh, something that makes sense to us. The proper rankings. Yeah. Yes, the proper rankings. So uh, on our last episode, the the part one of our uh, top 20 albums of 2022, we culled a list of nominees down to just 20 albums. And like Marco said, we now need to order them from one to 20. But before we do that, if you enjoy the show, leave five stars on Spotify or Apple, wherever you listen, honestly, or, or alternatively, you can uh, give us a thumbs up on YouTube and subscribe. If you want to watch this in video form on our YouTube channel at SOTS podcast, YT. Did you just hit him with a like and subscribe? I did it. I did it in a fucking audio podcast too, which so is fun, loud. bro. You can't, you can't escape the like and subscribe. <laughs> it comes for you. Uh, like and subscribe finds you everywhere. So every link you need in the description that we're getting, we're doing, we're doing all we're doing, we're doing business up top and then we're going to get into the real shit. Yeah. Uh, every link you need in the description of this episode, playlist, merch, discord, socials, uh, that YouTube channel I mentioned earlier. Scene daddy. At Scene Daddy, SceneDaddy.com to keep up to date with the news in the scene. And finally, last, last but not least, uh, last but most importantly, patreon.com slash SOTS podcast. If you enjoy what we do and you'd like to see us continue to do it, whether it's sharing bands on socials, recording podcasts, dropping reaction videos, you can get a lot of exclusives over on our Patreon, whether it's uh, our yearly Spotify unwrapped episode where me and Marcos dox each other's true music taste for the audience. So uh, you can realize that our adoration for all these bands is simply a front. And we spend all of our time listening to um, what, what, what would be the worst artist for you to pop up on your list? It's, that would it's be... the one that was number one. For oh, me. right. right, 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 right. <laughs> your, yours was authentic. For me, it'd be like, it just turns out I'm a pit bull guy. Yeah. <laughs> just 24 7. Pit, top five um, artists streamed pit bull. <laughs> pit bull one, pit bull two. Vamonos. Pit bull 182. Uh, what, what is actually funny about our Spotify rap, it's minor spoiler, is that neither of our most streamed artists this year. Is anywhere here on this top 20 album of 2022 list of nominees, but both of those artists did drop albums this year. So that's very true. That's very true. So, but, but if you want to find out all that and more, that is one of dozens of exclusive bonus episodes. We also have like exclusive reaction videos. You get free stickers for just signing up. There's a tier where you can get a monthly, uh, uh, uniquely designed sticker by our artist, uh, Risa. And those are always very fun. This this month's is our Golden Scene Man statue, which you saw in our SOTS Awards episode, which is also over on our YouTube channel. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> Fucking promote the shit out of this episode. So too much credit. Bro, bro. If you were a better podcast host, yeah, how, how this I is some advice this? to you to end the year. I, this? I want you to, uh, to go into the off season thinking on this. Okay. We have a stack of those stickers sitting on the desk in front of us. We could have pulled those over and just started like going to like Fuck. just fucking, you know what I mean? It's like, like I remembered but forgot I was on camera, <laughs> <laughs> which fucking is a weird feeling. Um, but uh, finally, la last but not least, last but not least, we promise we want to uh, thank our shout out club: Eric Hoxley, Jordan Marcus, Michael Hart, David Adams at David Adams CA, Christian Nino at Astronomer underscore Anonymous, Amber Nolan at Bayside underscore Demons, Luke Flanagan at Luke OT ninety two, Ryan Wolf, Matt Morris at Matt OTF two twenty, Ashley Lemon at Gender Punk XD, Maddie Gallows at Maddie Gallows with the A's R V, Zach Caliber TV, home for all the best live music videos, Shanna Struble, Donovan Johnson at Donovan J twenty two, Luke Burns at Luke Burnsy underscore, Alex Fish, Zach Harmon at Harm Alarm twenty nine, Justin Munez, Ashley at Serpent Soul. Jonah Kloster, Daryl M, Brian Calgar, Aaron Adams at A underscore A underscore Ramanutes, and finally Doc Strangeblaze. Thank you as always to our shout out club. Thanks to all of our patrons and thanks to all of our listeners for their patience. <laughs> <laughs> the unraveling of Sam this episode. This is, the this is okay. So for those, for, so for those of you who maybe are new to the podcast, like this is it. 
Um, um, this is the end of what we, we we've coined the regular season, and there may be a couple treats in the interim while you wait for us to start up again next year. But but this is like this this is like this is the big final fucking World Cup moment. This is the dinner rush. Like things cannot go wrong. We got to get all these plates out served. Nothing can come back to the kitchen, right? I don't know why I went to the kitchen reference there. Um, I'm just feeling like like kind of like Gordon Ramsay ish tonight. Do you ever watch? You never watch The Bear, right? No. I feel like that's more authentic to what we're doing here. <laughs> is this? Yeah. <laughs> just constantly works. Yeah, putting out fires. <laughs> Uh, so again, if you if you if you if you yeah, want no. the full end of year experience, go listen to our uh, SOTS award deliberations, our SOTS awards, which is a video and audio podcast, our part one top twenty album deliberations, um, which is audio and video as well, and 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 now experience our ranking. Of the top 20 albums of 2022, Marcus, uh, we're going to do that back and forth thing we did before, and we're going to read out currently in no particular order <laughs> what our top 20 albums are before we uh, properly rank them. The Death of Peace of Mind by Bad Omens. Heroin by Thornhill. Color Decay by The Devil Wears Prada. Pain Remains by Lorna Shore. Scoring the End of the World by Motionless and White. Rogue Carpet Disaster by Static Dress. Remember That You Will Die by Polyphia. Tatura by Boston Manor. Dark Sun by Dayseeker. Self-titled by Pool Kids. Techno by Electric Callboy. Vaxis 2, A Window of the Waking Mind by Coheed and Cambria. Future Lovers by Banks Arcade. The Unraveling of Pup the Band by Pup. Celebrity Therapist by The Callous Dowboys. Trinity by The Gloom in the Corner. Fever Dream by Palo Royale. Hell Finds You Everywhere by Thousand Below. Good Grief by 93 Feet of Smoke. A New Breed by Kaizo. I'm uh, I'm gonna go ahead and um do the do you're the, not gonna number them? Yeah, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and number them so then that way we can kind of like keep track of of where we're at. Let me That's get fair. a uh, let me get a hot one two three bow boom. And, and you know what? Just by looking at this, I'm already feeling pretty good. <laughs> you, you think um, we call it? You think we call it a night? I'm feeling pretty great already. <laughs> let me uh. Put some space in between the. Yeah, uh, let me let me get. Yeah, let All me those get those artists the, that didn't the, even didn't come make near. it yeah. out of this fucking. Get out of here. Go away. You <laughs> ban- had your opportunity. a couple of pages down. Lights is not going down without a fight, bro. I hit that enter button too many times. My computer is going to be entering <laughs> for like. All of eternity. I didn't realize you were lagging that hard. Is that what this is? I think I just like I was too aggressive with the enter button. All right, here's what I need from you. Here's what I need yeah. from you. Here's what I need from you. Yeah. I need a, a head check. Just be, be as general or direct as you want to be. Wait, look, just looking at this list, I'm going to address how, the audience. How do you want, how would how do you attack this? I'm going to address the audience, and and I'm I'm not ultimately sure where. No, don't look at me. Look at them. Not ultimately <laughs> sure where Sam lies here, but full transparency for me, with all due respect to every band and album currently on this list. I think there's only two albums in consideration for my top one and my top two. And I am undecided. I am undecided on what's going to take what home and everything else is fighting for placement between three and 20. And I, I would be surprised if I walk out of this episode with, with my mind having changed on that, I'm open to it. But but for me coming into the episode, that's where I'm currently at. My head's but, at the same place. My head's at the same place. Okay. But 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 mine's more definitive. I think right now it is the job of every other album on here to <laughs> convince me that the death of peace of mind by Bad Omens isn't the number one album of 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 2022. And and the reason for that is that I think so much of my decision making and my taste for what I liked this year is predicated on that album. It, it molded my perspective and my expectations for the whole year. And whenever I look at another album on this list, I think to myself, how did it compare to the death of peace of mind by bad omens? And, and 
19 other albums are on this list because I, I think, I think that they are in one way or another as good as that album. But this album, almost by virtue of, of, the, of the, almost just by the fact that it dropped at the top of the year, it like predetermined how I would feel about the rest of these albums. Like it, like what I looked for in an album this year was to recapture the feeling that I had listening to the, 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 the awe, the, the, the just how awe inspired I was listening to the death of peace of mind. Rekindle that flame as it were. Yeah. And, and that might not be entirely fair you know what i mean like it's not it's not entirely like like for all i know if the death of peace of mind dropped in july and a few of these albums dropped in like march maybe i would almost have like a different perspective on the whole thing you know what i mean right say uh i'll throw fucking throw pool out kids there. out there throw pool kids out there. Throw one out there say pool kids drops january february march maybe suddenly everything has to come up to pool kids level precisely what i'm precisely precisely what i'm saying exactly mm. Now, I don't necessarily think that that means that I'm locked with bad omens at one, but, but I think the conversations that we have in trying to figure this out is going to relatively determine whether it moves like, because like coming into this, I don't see a reason to move it from where it is, but that can change. Okay. I will say that, you know, we kind of compiled this list, you know, confidently locking in certain albums up top and then adding on as we went ones that we also felt needed to be included. Yeah, I think there were some there were also some late stage like, oh, well, there's no way like there there was rarely even there was barely even discussion around uh, too much around why they should be included. It was like, oh, well, you know, we hadn't locked in thousand below yet obviously and we kind of just pulled them up to the top of this list then we kind of got into it but like there were like just because you know 93 feet of smoke gloom in the corner are at 16 and 19 in terms of when they got locked into a top 20 again doesn't mean that that's where they're staying do you think there's a correct approach to this i know at one point you sort of threw out the mm. splitting this and kind of figuring out what needed to be in the top 10 and then rearranging what was left from 20 to 11 and then 10 to 1? I think so. Or or we could also pose the question of, are there any albums currently in this top 20 that you can't see climbing past like a 10 slot? And then maybe that's, kind of a similar approach to what I, I tried to dish out. There are albums in the 11 to 20 that I think need to be in the 10. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. When I look at it, I agree. What throw one out there. First honors, huh? Yeah. Go ahead. First it makes honors. it easier on me. Hmm. This is going to maybe come as a surprise. Right now, and I don't know how high up that 10 this goes. Okay, 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 okay. I had one of the absolute, one one of what I think are, are one of like the biggest blasts of the year in terms of time spent with an album, just consuming Trinity by the Gloom in the Corner. My man. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I just, sir. It's going to be an for, easy episode. For me, the Gloom in the Corner are visionaries. Absolute fucking visionaries. And I think that needs to be heavily rewarded. And I can't think of a better way than SLTS <laughs> podcast anointing in a top 10 album of 2022. Um, and I, I don't even know that like, like obviously there, there's a ton of bands all around them right now that are, are as innovative. I think especially in the gloom in the corners case, a lot more of that innovation worked on Trinity than maybe it did on on some of their their counterparts here on this list. So we're gonna we're gonna play a little game. Yeah. All right. And here's here's how it's gonna work. 
if you think it should be in the 10, I'm just, I'm going to go, I'm going to go right now. I'm just going to go. We're just going to keep pulling it. I'm just going to go right, right under nine. Okay. I'm just going to put it as a 10 album. Now. Is there this... anything? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to be honest with you. One, two, three, four. I cannot envision a reality where they are not in the 10. So here's where I'm at. I think that Dark Sun has to make a pretty significant jump from where it is. Okay, we're talking about Currently, Dark Sun by it's Dayseeker. At, yep, it's yep, at yep. number nine. It's by Dayseeker. Oh, yeah. For, 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 for the record, right now, that top four is The Death of Peace of Mind by Bad Omens, Heroin by Thornhill, Color to Cover the Devil's Prada, Pain Remains by Lorna Shore. <laughs> but Marcos feels pretty good that Dayseeker... And the gloom in the corner. I didn't say the gloom in the corner. No, no, no. You said it needs to be oh, in the yeah, 10. Oh, yeah. Just because these I'm are, just, yeah. I'm okay, just, okay. just kind of like, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm just making sure that they're mm. um, properly represented. None, none, these, these are all soft. These are all soft placements, so right? So soft. So, so I've just moved Day Seeker and the gloom in the corner. Now, theoretically, that would leave us with, so now we're talking about like four spots left in the in the top 10, right? So yeah, so the the four albums in the top 10 we haven't yet discussed. Scoring the End of the World by Motionless and White, Road Carpet Disaster by Static Dress, Remember That You Will Die by Polyphia, and Atura by Boston Manor. I'm going to scroll back down to 11 through 20, Sam, and I want you to tell me if there's currently a band down in that, down in the lower ranks that deserves a promotion. <laughs> I know I see one. I I actually maybe see two. My may I say I may right. I, say I, th I see three. I gotta take the temperature on this one. Yeah. Coheed and Cambria have access to a window with a waking mind. I feel like that's one that it's might lean heavier fairly, towards me than you. It's a fairly flawless album. I gotta hand it to Coheed and Cambria. Um that said, I'm I'm less married to that being a top ten. But but how how hard are you willing to fight for that, or how convinced are you it is? Not at the moment. Give just, me just I'm just throwing feelers out there. Yeah, I think I think th that there's there's a lot of reasons that album sticks out to me, and it's 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 I think a big piece of it is there's a few albums on here where it feels like. An artist I've been listening to my whole life exceeding in 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 a completely unimaginable ways, right? I think of like Prada. I, I think of Motionless and White. In some senses, I think of Palo Royale. Yeah. So Coheed's one of these bands I've been listening to for like 20 years. And so 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 to be here looking at this and going, th this is arguably the best they've ever been, which which is big. I think that if if we're talking if we're talking vision again if we're talking like conceptually the 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 album that they created and like hitting a vision and 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 the like you you, you know a lot of albums on here are flawless for what it's worth um but 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 Coheed and Cambria is like it's flawless on a couple levels which is like on a few levels it's flawless is what's crazy the 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 execution in the scope in which this album was written for is me the, the cell coheed's very similar to, to the gloom in the corner just with like the 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 album experience being like one of the best put together all year and and maybe that's which, showing my hand yeah. a little bit about the things i appreciate in an album and i'm really big on like the big picture conceptual nature and having all that work without any sacrifices whatsoever to just stripping those things and still having a really enjoyable album. But the fact that they're all there, it, it, it elevates it like significantly higher for me. You know, it's no, the same I, reason I, that I, like I would that probably go electric Cowboys techno, I think is more comfortable in the 11 to 20 frame than it is in the one to 10. Because I think that album's yeah. a lot of fun, but I but I don't think it's doing. Um, I think that album is 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 it, 
incredible. It is like, a collection of of what it is, but it's not like an extra like an over the top like. Um, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, like, I no, you're right. I think that I, I think we're fully aligned, maybe on both of these points. I think that techno is probably a collection. And that's why it's on this top twenty so far. A collection of some of the must hear songs of 2022 but it's not a a must hear album listening experience in the sense that like you you could realistically put techno on shuffle you couldn't put an album like Vaxus 2 on shuffle but could you and maybe that's what makes maybe. Vaxus 2 kind of incredible Here, just calm down uh um, all right what 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 <sighs> So, okay, so this is the approach we maybe want to take. I'm scared I start talking in circles. Go ahead. There's a big one that that I think follows the same uh, the same storytelling process in the sense that Trinity and Vax's 2 do. Mm-hmm. And I think it's actually the unraveling of Pup the Band. You're not. You know what? There's kind of two, right? Yeah. Left on here, there's there's sort of two more, right? It's Pup and it's kind of Palo Royale as well. It's a little bit of Palo Royale as well. And I guess is it is it also celebrity therapist? I don't think there's an underlying storyline. Ah, you're right. Maybe not. Maybe not. I think the callous Dow boys are almost at times operating at a level that I can appreciate but not fully comprehend. Which, 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 for what it's worth, maybe makes them even better than the other bits we're discussing. We keep it fucking honest here at the SOTS podcast. I think you're right. Um, Celebrity Therapist is an album that, like, I really enjoy on its uh, like surface level. I really appreciate what it's swinging for, but I don't fully comprehend what is happening. What is the next move you would make here? Whether it be pulling something out of the 10 or putting something in the 10. Hmm. I would. All right. All right. Let me look at this. Let me look at, let me look at what's in this 10 right now. It's slightly more complicated than I thought it was going to be. I don't, I honestly don't even just, hate what I'm looking at for just the 10 right now. From, I think, the only two moves that we have made, this list got a lot more complicated than what it was 15 minutes ago. I swear you said you had like three albums here that you thought should move up. I feel like you said the words pop. We kind of both said Electric Cowboy are probably cozy where they are. I see a few albums on here that I think are cozy. I don't see Kazo or 93 Feet of Smoke swinging up to the top 10. How, I how don't high think do I you see, see those Banks. swinging? I honestly let's, let's, don't let's talk even about new breed. I want to talk about new breed. Is that is that a soft lock already at 20 or does it climb higher? I think that my 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 bottom 3 of the top 20 albums of 2022. Really, let me let me let me let me couch it, right? Let me couch <laughs> it in that. So you understand that, like, worst case scenario, you're one of the best albums of the year. My bottom of this list is probably 93 Kazo Banks Arcade. Except, no, mm-mm. except I might actually put Banks a little higher. I'd probably go Banks 93 Kazo. And here's here's my thought on that. The the Kazo the Kazo experiment is is such for me an unprecedented excess, success. But but let me let me get nitpicky. Maybe it's a couple songs too long. Maybe I don't love so, every track. It's one of those cases where like when it excels and it excels ninety percent of the time, it's like one of the coolest fucking experiments we've ever had in this scene. The biggest strike, but not perfect, right? Not perfect. In your opinion, then, is that 20 songs, an hour and six minutes, a bit on the longer side. Right. Like, like, and like, like if we're getting nitpicky, there. cut four songs, significantly tighter album. No, that's fair. Um, 
no, none it of is... those reasons strong enough for me to talk it out of top 20 but but i'm thinking no, it, of course not it like it like it casually sits at the bottom of the top 20 the, in my head i i think there's a conversation for 93 feet of smoke climbing just a little no, I'm not saying it has to go over like Binks Arcade or anything. I'm just saying like I, I mean I you are that saying that because at that point the only climb it has to make would start with going over Banks Arcade unless you're moving Banks Arcade up alongside no, no, of it. No, 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 no. So I, I meant more so that like so 93 feet of smoke, really the only like fucking emo hyper pop pop artist on this list in a way. Sure. That it's the best example of that genre this year. Like, I don't know if like 19 is a good fit for this album. I think that it does a lot of great things. I think that it is um, the best example within that genre of the year. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we'll return to that conversation. Here's what I see when I look at this list. I think I see pool kids and coheed in the top 10. I just don't know how to do it. And I think I see Static Dress falling right outside of it. But I'm going to hit you with this. I'm not fully on board with even my own train of thought. I, I would sooner drop out Boston Manor and Polyphia than I would Static Dress. Why? Row Carpet Disaster? speaks to my heart and soul just a little bit more than those records so you look at that and that's that's just kind of the surface level explanation there um if we want to dive into it a little deeper um i think the tour obviously is a shorter album and that's not a knock against it but it has less room for error i feel like road carpet Tra road carpet disaster is a bit longer has a little bit room more room for error it's from a band that is younger. Um, and I think that they, I, I would put static dress up against pretty much any band on this list is like where I'm going with this. Like, I think that for a debut album, it is, it's about as great a debut album as you could possibly ask for. Again, it, like we we kind of touched on it in the the part one of this, the deliberations. When we got to the static dress part, again, I, I can't I can't exactly explain it to you why this is the case, but like I listened to static dress and I feel like I did when I was a child first discovering seed music for the first time, not because it's very nostalgia driven, not because it comes from a, a sound that is familiar, but because it it just elicits that reaction out of me of when I press play on that album, it's like experiencing music again for the first time, which is why I can't. And, and that's not to say, Oh, that's my number one. It's, it's to say that like, I don't know if I feel the same with Polyphia or Boston. I mean, those just happen to be the two that are right beneath it. So that's why I'm, I'm singling those two specifically out. Well, let's get to some, we haven't really dived into. I think thousand below are probably too low on this list in hell finds you everywhere. Hmm. An album that is finally out and you can go listen to yeah, it. By the album way. Is out. You can go listen to it. Check out our review from a couple weeks back. Um, mm -hmm. You would bump Polyphia out of the 10. And you would bump Boston Manor out Ultimately, of the 10. Ultimately, you're the one doing all the bumping, Sam. You're the one doing all the bumping here, pal. I'm talking hypotheticals. Is there a single band in the 11 to 20 right now you can't see not being in the top 10? Like, is there someone you would really go to bat for to, to pop Polyphia and Boston Manor off of that list? I can't believe I'm saying this, Sam, but <laughs> Pal Royale sort of belong in the top 10 this year for Fever Dream. And I'm I'm trying right now to like navigate 
the maze in my mind to get you an answer as to why that's the case. But they're the first name that pops out to me in that bottom 20 that I think definitely shouldn't be there. Maybe not a definitely. Like, I, like if they end up being an 11 when this is all said and done, I'm not losing sleep over it. But right now... I've put Palo Royale at 11. I'm going to put Coheed right underneath it at 12. Here's here's a different approach. Yeah. Um that I that I want you to to look at this li- like here's a different lens I want you to look at this list with sure. real quick. Um, what album in the, the, the 13 to 20 range right now, Mm -hmm. do you expect to spend the most amount of time with this time next year? You see, that's some fuck shit. You see, that's some fuck shit. Because it could be an album I've already addressed, like an electric cowboy, but I but I've explained why I think it's better for an eleven to twenty. But it doesn't mean that it might not be the guiltiest pleasure so, I've ever had. So that was kind of where I was going with that, because because realistically, like I think of all the albums left on here, like probably between maybe thousand below and. Electric Callboy. Those are the bands I'm spending the most of time amount of time with this time next year between uh the the remaining bands in, in that 13 to 20 range. Um, but does that mean those are the best albums left here? It doesn't. No. We're exactly. talking about the accomplishments of the year. Pool Kids is one that's just fucking staring me down this whole time. So is it <laughs> is it is it called self-titled or is it pool kids it's called pool kids I'm i just, just said sure. self-titled is like what we, you call an album named after the fucking well, band we put rain city drive by rain city drive earlier and it mm. fucked me not we you well. <laughs> <laughs> uh you uh, can call it pool kids by pool kids if it makes you happy either way you're talking about the same album Motionless and White scoring the end of the world. Is it 10? Uh, this sticks out at me here. I don't know if that's a 10. It is an, an enormous album from Motionless and White. I, mm-hmm. I do love it. Again, this is... I feel like I have to clarify this when I, I potentially softball a, a, a demotion on, on this, mm-hmm. this kind of episode, but... I don't know ultimately if scoring the end of the world is a top 10 album of the year. And it's for me right now, the it's the one it's that the sticks, one that sticks, out. sticks out a little too much. Yeah. Let's say I, let's say I put it right outside, right? Mm-hmm. I dropped it right at number 11. How do you feel about the 10 you're looking at right now? Does that feel right to you? I'll run through it real quick just for, for audio listeners. Sure, so The Death sure, of Peace sure, sure. Mind by Bad Omens, Heroin by Thornhill, Color Decay by The Devil Wears Parada, Pain and Remains by Lorna Shore, Dark Sun by Dayseeker, Trinity by The Gloom in the Corner, Rogue Carpet Disaster by Static Dress, Remember That You Will Die by Polythia and Datura by Boston Manor, plus uh, Pal Royale's Fever Dream. Uh... So now... I'll... Uh, on the flip side, here's what I where I got caught up is I don't know if Fever Dream beats out scoring the end of the world for me personally. Mm. And I know for some people, like a uh, a one one swap at like ten eleven might seem a little arbitrary, but I assure you, for us, it means the world. I don't know. What's your thoughts? Do you at all feel like Pool Kids is a top ten album of twenty twenty two? I sort of do, but you sort of don't. Give me yes, so why, and yes, no. The, the conundrum no we why. face now yeah. is it's, for me, suddenly Pool Kids versus the three-headed beast that is Pal Royale, Motionless and White, and Coheed and Cambria. And the question, obviously, is do I prefer their self-titled album over Fever Dream, Scoring the End of the World's? Or Vaxis 2. And 
and maybe so let's say maybe i prefer it over fever dream and motionless do i prefer it over vaxis 2 which you really sold me on the fucking conceptual nature album like full listening experience uh aspect of it and i don't know gets a little more complicated because now i'm like okay well so is it vaxis that actually should be in the top 10 every album in here does like one or two things so well like there are two like two like explicit reasons why they make this list and i always look at pool kids and i say nobody wrote as well as pool kids did nobody not a single other fucking band not not a nobody absolutely not a single one and i i for me personally that's big like that's big big but i also feel kind of strongly about coheed i'd almost i would arguably get a little crazier with this personally Oof. and i would put coheed and pool kids as like my 910 and then boston manor palo royale and motionless are just outside of that in the top 20 um polyphia i can't personally see coming off the top 10 talk to me about it, boston manor i i think back to some of the reasons that we kept bands off of our top 20 and we kind of spoke about that and i think a big one was our are they doing anything categorically different than they've always done like are are is anything they've done like caught me off guard and for me boston manor is almost on this list because they're such a known quantity it's like it's another year at Boston Manor put out a great album. Like, no surprise, right? And and because I think Boston Manor is such a uniquely special band in this scene, that is enough to get them in the top 20. Like, uh, Boston Manor not missing a beat, that means Boston Manor is still one of the best bands in this scene by a mile. But if I really want to celebrate what 2022 brought, I don't know that, like... Like, Detura didn't, like, blow me away in the way that, like, the death of peace of mind, coming from a band who I always thought was good, so still being good. Like, like for me, the death of peace of mind is the next step. I don't know that Detour is the next step so much it's, like, the continuation of one of the best bands of the scene. Fully agree. I think that Boston Manor right now as talented as any single band that we are looking at on this on whatever whatever's in the top 10 but for me there's a a small little bit of disappointment that this band hasn't elevated their sound in the same way that bad omens d did to, to kind of loop back to the first thing that you talked about in the sense that I look at Boston Manor and I tell you that I have a tattoo of that band's logo on my arm. I, they have released some of my favorite material of all time, including Datura. But I know that they're capable of so much more. The thing is, is that they did, though. You know, that's kind of the thing with Boston Manor is we're talking about them now and comparing them to a band who is seeing the same ascension and growth that Boston Manor already saw. So we're, yeah. so we're almost talking about different stages of a band's career. You know what I mean? Like, Welcome to the Neighborhood, for me, respectfully, is almost a better a album than The Death of Peace of Mind. Respectfully. Relax. Like, Welcome to the Neighborhood is one of the most perfect artistic endeavors in history, right? Like, that's so a more, top more 10 all-time album, right? More what I mean is, like... Detour is just not I, welcome I'm to not the gonna, neighborhood, I right? Can't, I it's can't, not that level of growth. It's not that exponential. It's not... It's not a surprise because it's 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 sort of stylistically similar and still continues to be very good, but it's not it's it's like 2022 is a defining year for bad omens, and this album is a defining album of the year. Detour by Boston Manor is one of the best albums of this year, but I don't think it quite defines it in a way that like I'm starting to think about this top 10. Which is why 
when we scroll to the 12 and 13. You're right. Now I, I feel like they've fallen a little too. Two. Yeah. And, and then I still look at those two albums and wonder if they need like, like motionless and Paula actually might still need to be in the top 10. And I'm not sure where I sit on this. So we move Boston Manor down to number 13. Do you see anybody here moving up further than they already are? I know you kind of, Thousand Below stood out to you. And I you mentioned Pop. I actually think that me personally, I I take Thousand Below and Pop over Electric Callboy. I think Electric Callboy is quietly closer to like the 16 yeah. spot. top of their class for for a genre that feels like it doesn't even exist outside of them anymore so, so what i'll also say too is um it, this, right, this is this is a this is a new iteration of electric call boy and the fact that nico's in this band now uh sure they've had the ep now they've had the album but i don't even think they've begun to scratch the surface of that potential. I think you're right about that in a sense. Yeah. So what I look at with techno is that is a, an incredible proof of concept. Doesn't seem like the right uh, thing to apply to techno yet or, or, or in this instance, but like I look at techno and I'm like, this is, this is the junior version of whatever the fuck this band's about to deliver. I kind of agree with your thought Which is process, like somehow yeah. going to be like, a a 10 out of 10 perfect record someday is hell finds you everywhere a similar argument because it does feel like to me thousand below really exploded in terms of like their potential with this album but it still feels like there's there's a a, a ceiling they haven't hit in a really exciting way yeah well, I mean, I think Bad Omens is a really good example here. And the fact that, like, the the second album is a great example, especially, like, the, the deluxe version of that, mm -hmm. of a, a band's trajectory, like, that incline being very evident from, like, a, a quality perspective and thinking to yourself, like, well, this is definitely, this can't be this band's best album because I know that they have a death of peace of mind in them. I know that they have a an, an album after that in them. And I kind of look at Boston Manor the same way. Um, but but ultimately, I think that that ends up being a tough conversation. What do you like and not like about? I will say what I like and not like about this currently is that I take the absolute madness of the Callus Dowboys over the. S sillier madness that is pop the band yeah um it that that gets complicated though and what because then sense? i look at boston manor and i'm i'm thinking are they then 14 and callous dab boys are 13 and it's not because i'm <laughs> if anything we talked earlier about like albums that we would spend the most amount of time with this time next yeah, year. It's Boston Manor. I'm probably spending the most amount of time out of any of the albums left on this list with Boston Manor. It's like Boston Manor, Thousand year. Below, Electric Cowboy. Yeah. <laughs> um, but like the what the Callous Dab was also might be more with know, know, know. Celebrity Therapist is it's such a lightning in the bottle type of experience. Like no other band on this list could have made an album even similar to this one. Mm -hmm. Like there, there's no band on this list. Like the Callous Cowboys. they're, they're just exploding with talent at, at every level. And celebrity therapist is a, a really great example of like everything just kind of working at once. And like I could, I could argue that that, that album that, deserves to be higher, but it it gets now now that gets really complicated because I'm looking at some of the placement and I'm like, I can't really see 
much more movement considering the amount of movement some of them have already had. I feel like there are aspects of celebrity therapists where I look at it and go, is there still something here that needs like fine tuning w without being able to fully put my finger on it? Simil sim you know, we're, we're talking about like, like these albums that feel like exponential growth for the band and um, they're, 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 they're very strong, but in a sense, celebrity therapist does still feel like a band, like trying to find exactly the best way to present what it is they're doing. I, I is, is how so I, your, your is, argument is my, here, like interpretation when listening to that album is, is now your argument, the kind of like the, the opposite of what we were having, which is. Is is Boston Manor's presentation on Datura a more valuable quality that it it has? In the sense that, like, are Boston Manor better at what they do than the Callous Dowboys? Is almost like what you're asking me, and I think the answer is yes. And there are reasons for it, right? Like, like Boston Manor's been a band for 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 a lot longer, and 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 they've been fine tuning what it is they do for for longer for more albums and i have more material of theirs for me to thus base that opinion off of right with the Callis Dow boys but I, I think back to like die on mars and celebrity therapist like completely it almost fucking obliterates that album from existence it right easily. the same way that welcome the neighborhood for me uh, obliterates anything boston manor did prior to that from existence i have to remind myself sometimes what that debut album's name is Pre precisely right um but that being said, like you, you talk about like having no point of comparison for Callous Cowboys. It's like, I man, I don't, I don't know what they do is so fucking special and unique, and and that it the fact that it it works at all, and 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 also pr predicated on the fact that this is an alternative music podcast, I almost feel like that is the type of album that deserves to be celebrated a little bit more than then maybe it is based on where it currently sits, right? Suddenly I'm talking to myself into a 10, <laughs> like, like, like a 10 spot for Callus. I don't know. Like, so quietly, I'm almost talking myself into a 10 spot for Callus. I think the problem I personally have is there's like seven albums uh, outside of the top 10 that I could talk into the 10 spot. And I, I think it's literally like eleven through seventeen. So are you gonna get fucking crazy right now? I was gonna what say. You so you're not. I was, I'm, I, I, like, okay, I, was, okay. I was flipping this. I was just gonna make <laughs> our twenty one. <laughs> so I don't. I honestly, actually, do not hate what I'm looking at from fourteen to twenty. So right now, that's at fourteen. We have Detour by Boston Manor, followed by. The Unraveling of Pup the Band by Pup, Hell Finds You Everywhere by Thousand Below, Techno by Electric Callboy, Future Lovers by Banks Arcade, Good Grief by 93 Feet of Smoke, and New Breed by Kazo. I feel like two of these albums we didn't really have a, a super strong conversation about. Uh, Future Lovers by Banks Arcade. Um, that's, that's such a phenomenal outing from a band who uh, so clearly has so much to say and has such a unique way of articulating it, but both like verbally and, and like... Um, audibly i think there's a unique delivery sonically audibly like you're saying in the sense that like this band can transform like i guess like a maybe as good as many of the other bands on like i i think that like man banks arcade every other song is like you're listening to an entirely different album or a different band mm -hmm. and in a very yeah. in a very coherent way is what i want to stress there it's not like it's not whiplash by any means it's like suddenly banks arcade are doing something you didn't know they had in their wheelhouse that they had in their tool belt and to be fair it's like you don't really they, know anything about them because i feel like they're such a like unknown quantity yeah, yeah. so uh future lovers is a debut album uh, banks arcade might be somehow some way probably the artists people are least familiar with on this list. Um, I think I'd that's say fair. probably like pool kids and 93 V to smoke based on just the, the community of, of fans that we've built. Right. Um, yeah. 
what was the other album you said we hadn't really discussed much? Well, was it I was kind of I was kind of thinking ninety three feet of smoke a little bit. I, I feel like some of the things you said about Banks Arcade you can sort of uh, attribute to to ninety three feet of smoke a little bit too. Where uh, even Kazo for that matter, like there, there there's a a weird like. Um, perfect coupling of bands here in the 18 to 20 spot of artists who like the the albums really sort of go all over the place but never really feel incohesive um and and they're really exciting because you never quite know what direction they're gonna go in um but i still feel kind of strongly that they're all kind of in in a really good spot down here yeah so i think between future lovers good grief and new breed I think that they've obviously got some of the best songs of the year. The problem that those have in trying to uh, to climb this ladder further is the highlights on other albums just shine a little brighter. Yes. Yes. I here here here's here's a little bit what I think. I think 15 to 20 is locked. Unless you have some insanely strong feeling about where any of these bands sit. The the only one that that I think we might regret is where Thousand Below sits. I think Pup's a little high, honestly. The more I look at Pup, the more I almost want to drop them into a... Yeah, I think I've been starting to feel that way. They're almost like I almost put them like right under banks for me. Where I think what they're doing is really fucking cool and fun, and and I think that in terms of like the nasaliest uh, self aware pop punk band in history, Pup like Listen, just like perfectly embodies it with I this think record. What Pup did was accomplish the unthinkable which was make weezer for hot people (laughs) and it is it is it is weezer but cool right sure sure um, but it's not cool but 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 it's it's fucking cool yeah and there there's a there's a part of me that like i look at this list and like depending on the day i'll tell you like just going like scanning up and down this list like the bands that put the biggest smile on my face are like somehow electric cowboy and pop. I think that goes fair, a long way. Fair. I think that goes a long way, but I think that maybe there's a couple, I think um, with pup, it does lose my attention on like two tracks. There's, there's a little bit of like a preferential genre, yeah. like taste that I have with pop that it's, it's also probably the same reason that pool kids, even though I'm like, blown away by the things they do well there's a couple songs on there that don't quite speak to my personal music taste right in in a way that's like man if we're talking about like speaking to my personal taste like motionless and white's way too low on this list that like that's the kind of fuck shit (laughs) oh okay so you know what i feel now like that that 15 through 20 is locked all right so i'm gonna read the 15 through 20 real quick and we're, and we're gonna we're probably gonna lock it it's hell finds you everywhere by thousand below at 15 followed by techno by electric cowboy future lovers by banks arcade the unraveling of pup the band by pup good grief by 93 feet of smoke and new breed by Kazo. so now so now let's almost like now let's let's focus a little so bit so now is where it gets really complicated um And you're right. I think I put motionless higher. And I'm how I'm high s- do you put right? That? That's the question. And the problem is, <laughs> let's let's run through scoring the end of the world real quick. Yeah. Um. We did touch on it a little bit during deliberations, but again, I'm I'm fairly adamant that this is this band's best album in a decade. It's absolutely 100%. It is the first time that you or I have both uh, seriously like considered them in a top 20 in a in a while, um, and I think that it's got so much going for it. And honestly, I can't really think of what goes against it. 
what is keeping it from climbing higher on this list? So here's you? here's my thought process on it. You're not going to be happy how I'm going to tie this together. Two albums on here are monumentous achievements in the band's career. And I thoroughly enjoy them. But I think when you look outside of them, there are albums that I think, I, I feel are maybe doing things that are a little more extraordinary big picture wise, like across the scene in, in its entirety. Now, those two bands are Motionless Hawaiian and the Double Wars Prada. I think they are phenomenal metalcore records. Like the two best metalcore records to come out th this year. No, no questions asked, right? If, if, you, you know, if we're, if, if we're almost looking at the gloom in the corner, like a deathcore band for what it's worth, if Lorna Shore's deathcore, Dayseeker, Bad Omens, Thornhill, don't remember how to play metalcore. <laughs> Those for me, like, we're just talking like straight ahead, the style of metalcore that I've been listening to for like 20 years. Like, 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 like just doing it fucking almost as good as you could possibly fucking ever hope to do it. It's those two bands and still experimenting just enough outside of it to make it, um, significantly more interesting than the 50 other similarly styled albums that came out this year, right? And also standing out from albums over the last decade. But I feel like looking look looking at it in, in a very specific sense, I feel like Motionless and White absolutely obliterated Motionless and White. <laughs> and I think The Devil Wears Prada absolutely obliterated The Devil Wears Prada. Okay. Let me okay. let me no, pull no, no, a random no, no. I got, one out. I got one more for you then. I think Polyphia obliterates almost like tons of other like just in general obliterates every other band. <laughs> Pal Royale obliterated Pal Royale. Pal Royale obliterated Pal Royale. And and but, and but then, but then we can get similarly real crazy we can say the same thing about Coheed and Cambria. No. I feel differently about Coheed and Cambria than I do Motionless and White, but not entirely the Devil Wears Prada. Where I am at right now, Prada and Coheed is and Cambria gave that... me fucking goosebumps, and 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 that's like in almost like that's Prada like something I can't like. Prada and Coheed give give me goosebumps in a way that like I I can't even properly verbalize okay, what's so, so special about those albums. So but it's like me, a feeling. Let me get into something that I teased at the top of the but show. I don't know if Motionless does the same thing. My only hangup about Coheed is a technicality. Are they a seed band? Sam's never like the word. <laughs> Sam's never like the name Claudio. <laughs> um, uh, I hate guys with curly hair. <laughs> <laughs> like so, I look at Coheed and Cambria and go, they're alternative on uh, on the basis that all rock music is now alternative. Yeah. Well, so so this is actually this Coheed and Cambria on here might actually be a necessary um like ultimately wherever Coheed lies is going to be a good precursor to how next year goes. Cause right now we've got Paramore coming up. I believe in Miracles, there's a Fall Out Boy album on the horizon. Who knows what that looks like? Truthfully. I've always I've always thought about those albums different bands differently in the same way that I think of Twenty One Pilots differently because they got their start in the scene and I don't know that Coheed ever got their fucking start in the scene. You know what I mean? Okay, like I like they were popular yeah. like alternative music maybe when they started like they weren't always one of the bigger rock bands but they were never seen in the same way that Twenty One Pilots, Paramore, and Fall Out Boy are scene defining bands even though they're significantly bigger than what a scene band is at this point in time. My soft locks at one and two that I don't think, I don't think ends up changing by the time this episode is over. Color decay gets moved into number two. And right now for me, my gut is telling me that the death of peace of mind by bad omens is the best album of the year. And my heart is actually telling me that it belongs to color decay by the devil Wears Prada. And that's my personal hang up. Here's my wrench. Are I we... think there's a strong argument for Lorna Shore as the number one album of the year. Cat 
counter. <laughs> I <laughs> That's was it. going to argue Pain Remains is almost too high at number four. <laughs> and I need everyone to fucking breathe before I say this next part. I think Immortal is the better album. You are just wrong. And that, for me, is why I it's look at It's just like Pain such a bad remains. opinion. I can't even fucking believe you said it out loud. Like, that's where I, that's where I, like, I can't even fucking formulate a fucking thought that that's your approach to this discussion right now. It's, it's the same, it's the same question I posed earlier, which is, what album do you expect to be spending time with a year from now? And for me, like, when, when Lorna Shore's career is all said and done, and granted, like, there's... There is a shadow that's been cast over Immortal in a in a in a disappointing way, obviously. Yeah, like a large Luby shadow. Yeah. But but ultimately I look at Immortal and I it has like my favorite song or two from Lorna Shore. That pain remains doesn't. All right, let's But what is your argument for number one? Let's say let's say it's an excellent album. Let's say this. Let's say this. Let's say Immortal does have some really good songs. It is not the career defining planting of your foot in the very top maybe of that the genre. Me. Maybe that blinded me. The way the fucking pain you're right, remains Because right, now that I hear you say it back to me. And pain remains is such a significantly well thought out whole of an right, album right, right. you said immortal back to me you brought me back down to earth fucking could you brought me back down being. to earth you brought me back down to earth why do i think it's number one because i think it's arguably the greatest deathcore record in history <laughs> and that's gonna count for a lot for me i don't know that i'm looking at the best metalcore record in history on you i don't know that i'm looking at the best pop punk record or emo record or alternative rock record in history um but i can look at this list and unequivocally say that to me pain remains is the best deathcore record i've ever heard in my whole life and that counts I, for something i can't believe i'm saying this I think Color Decay is the best metalcore album I've heard in my life. All right, but shut the fuck up, bro. And I'm going to stand by that one. You, you're gonna putting stand me in a position where I have to argue against an album that I absolutely fucking adore, but but I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. I hate where you've put me. The, the renaissance that the Devil Wears Prada have continually undergone for the the past couple of years that that refinement in their own personal sound has culminated into their best collection of songs ever and i think what are ultimately some of the best collection some of the best metalcore songs fucking period i'm talking like two songs off this album that suddenly catapult into the top 15 metalcore songs ever written Watchtower and Salt. And, and for me, I look at the Devil Wears Prada as a band that I had almost not written off. I think but, I dove into an argument earlier that I wanted to get to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, 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 like I, no, I want you to keep going now. Well, well, so, so ultimately I look at the top five right now and I don't think anything needs to be moved. In the top five. Oh, no. No, I think... Well, so now I'm confused because you just told me Lorna Shore No, I mean, one. I mean, I mean, nothing, nothing will go down is what I'm saying. Like, like it might flip-flop who's one to five, but I think one, two, three, four, five, which currently is The Death of Peace of Mind by Bad Omens, Heroin by Thornhill, Color Decay by The Divorce Prada, Pain Remains by Lorna Shore, and Dark Sun by Dayseeker. I don't know that anything moves those five albums for me personally. And then there was Polyphia. Polyphia for me is six with a bullet. Who I actually, yeah, I, I look at the gloom in the corner and static dress who have a long healthy career in front of them of continuing to make better and better music. And I look at Polyphia who right now have hit in 
one of the biggest peaks in the history of this scene with remember that you will die. And I think that is for now, number six for me, you know, is remember that you will die. The greatest instrumental with all respect to Mozart, the greatest instrumental record in history. Or is it, does it not count because aspects of it do include vocal features? <laughs> Did Mozart ever have features? The Beethoven does jumps it, on a track. Does it count if like, like, uh, vocals for one song? <laughs> what was Mozart alive? Socrates drops a fucking, like who the fuck would speak over a Mozart track? It's a very funny thought to have. Yeah. All right, here's here, here's what I'll do a little bit of right now. I will move Polyphia up and say pretty strongly that nothing will change about the top six now that Polyphia is in it. They may shift around, but they will not fall from one to six. How do we get motionless back into this top ten? I think, I think, I, mm, fuck, I think mm, it's, it's nine or it's, it's nine or it's, it's, it's nine. Mm, fuck. It's, mm, it's, it's gotta be nine or 10 that drops, right? It can't, it can't be anything can't other be seven, than that. Right? I don't know. I, I'm really torn because I feel like I'm the one. I don't know. I feel like you and I are both arguing pretty heavily for for two albums on here. What do you mean? That that the other is has maybe a little less of a appreciation for. Yeah, I understand what you're trying to say. Which which I think for you is probably Pool Kids and I think for me is Static Dress. And I think that we both have a common ground in Motionless and White. And I hate to keep going back to this conversation, but I am willing to bet this time next year, we're still running back a lot of the tracks on scoring the end of the world. And we're not doing the same with pool kids and we're not doing the same with static dress. And I also don't think we're doing the same with coheed, but I think I'm and doing I think the we're going to be doing the same Royale. thing with fucking yeah. calorie Al. Fuck. Fuck. You're right. Fuck. Somehow. Cause I what I think is that, it goes Polyphia, the gloom in the corner, motionless and white, Pal Royale, and then I don't know what twelve, eleven, ten is. But but you feel strongly that motionless and Pal Royale are in the top. T- All right, let me let me let me pop them in there. Let's and- let's do it and see what it looks like. Because I do we'll want, we'll I do start. want to remind everyone that when you and I were looking at this top ten, granted this was before we kind of moved some things around, "Motionless and White" stuck out as an album that isn't in the top ten. So why are they here now? You know why they're here now? Yeah, because they speak to they speak to like the reason I even started this podcast to begin <laughs> with, and it's like one of my favorite bands of all time is very very good on this record, like. Very, very good. And that, and, and when you say like go back and revisit an album, that that those are exactly the albums that yes, I am going to go back and revisit. So it's like, what's more important to me? Like satisfaction or appreciation? Like, is it is it is it the overall feeling that I get from the album or the individual aspects of it that I think are are like on a point for point basis better? You know, like there ain't a lyric on scoring the end of the world that even comes marginally close close to to poor kids. kids. Like, and I would say the same thing about like static dress and, and probably coheed. I have a really hard time pulling static dress out of the top 10 for what it's worth. I, I appreciate that. Um, I actually, what what I'm actually, I'm going to throw something at you. There is a coheed conundrum here that's just like a, l- 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 like trying to speak to a feeling that I can't fully like verbalize like I, like I said earlier. All right. So so don't get mad at me. Is 11 and 12 actually Trinity and Coheed? 
is 11 and 12 Trinity and Coheed? I don't understand. Trinity and Gloom. If Trinity comes off of here, then Coheed would be like number sure, 10. Yeah. Well, so what I was going to say, is it... Is it six Polyphia, seven Motionless, mm. eight Pal Royale, nine Static Dress, ten Pool Kids? I think I've become more comfortable with Pool Kids and where they currently sit because I'm thinking of my overall feelings about that album and I've really hyper fixated on the thing it does well. But I don't know if that and necessarily kind of like means the rest. Like the the and for what it's worth, as like a full out, if we're talking, we're going back to that like conceptual thing. It's like I don't know if subtle's the word for it, but it, but it's less maybe in your face the way Coheed and Cambria has a baby crying in the opening track as their way of talking about like like this whole fucking story yeah, they're telling yeah. pool kids is just like hey listen people break up you know life be like that yeah, yeah. yeah. and it just you know the, 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 the articulated in, in in ways that i've never like fully like heard before and appreciate so so much but but if we're talking like what like on a base level what is like my enjoyment of a full album I think motionless is slightly high. I think if they're on this list, I think if Palo Royale and motionless are on this list, they're nine and 10 for me. I think I would move Coheed above both of them, but I don't want to lose static dress from this list either. So, but that's with, with, with that fucking caveat that I think I really fucking so I have I think, a hard time with Coheed and and who they are and what they represent as a band and not really being seen. And that's why part of me feels okay with them at 11. Like, like I've got some struggles here, but that's kind of where my head's at. But I will say this. Uh, this is the wrong spot for this. Static dress for me is above Palo Royale, Emotionless and White. It's just like that that album is is it's just it's not only is it an incredible album to listen to just on the basis that it's like some of the most sharply written fucking post hardcore meets screamo you'll ever hear in the history of the it is, genre. It is the like the perfect concoction of that. Yeah. It's also coming from a band in the fucking infancy of their career. Like we were talking about Banks Arcade coming out of the gate hot. Static dress laps them a thousand times over yeah. in terms of like <laughs> just like uh, just at the outset how fucking insanely talented and so, good that band is. So my question here for you is, what is is seven locked? I don't know that it's locked. What I'm trying to figure out is who's in the ten right now, and I'm actually. Coming around to how comfortable I'm, I am about what the 10 is. I'm starting to feel pretty good about this. I'm starting to feel pretty good. And then I'm looking back at this list a little bit and wondering if 1,000 Below is too low. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but here, I don't know if I want to start pulling you, some Sam. fuck shit at this point. Here's in the what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to tell you one thing. Yeah. I think 1,000 Below or 12. I can't believe I'm taking a band that's in italics right now. <laughs> We never established what italics them. mean. <laughs> Your finger slipped. It's all right. Because I think when it's all said and done, and I'm not even saying go out a year this time, I'm saying go out a month. I think hell finds you everywhere, and my mind continues to climb over many of these albums. I think it's, oh, fuck yeah. Yes, it's just, it's just, it just, it just feels, 12? it feels a little, no, it's not, it's not fucking, it's not. So here's where it gets complicated. Cause I think I take both of those albums you just dropped over Coheed. You're wrong. I think that, 
as far as I would let Coheed fall, it's 11. And if you go and listen to that album again, you'd agree with me. And yeah, there is, there is again, there is an unquantifiably incredible feeling that Coheed and Cambria captures on that album. And And I feel like I've 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 almost fucked myself creating a narrative around why they shouldn't be in the ten when they put yeah, out it's a starting top to get ten to album. Me. It's starting to get to me too. And I'm looking at the two albums above it and thinking to myself, they didn't so, do that. So so they hold didn't on. do it. I think before discussions can continue on placement. I don't think that we've dived nearly deep enough into Fever Dream. Why is this the Pal Royale album? I mean, why is it the Pal Royale album? Is is for me speaks for itself. It's almost like asking the question is rhetorical. Like if you've listened to all the Pal Royale's albums, and Fever Dream isn't immediately in your mind the best one by a significant margin, then I don't know what to tell you. But why why of... this year does it stand out so much? Because Palo Royale is very similar to how I felt about Spirit Box last year. And it's one of those things where it's like, man, what do you say about an album that has like six of the best fucking songs of the year and not... Motionless and White is almost in the same conversation, right? It's You look at both of those albums. I think it's like, why they've been kind of together, together this whole time. <laughs> it's like Fever Dream, Oblivion, Broken, No Love in LA, Punching Bat. Like, it's it's a disgusting amount of, like, insanely good songs. I also think the risks that they take are, like, really solid as well. You're talking about is the, it the song with LP. Uh, I think it's Lines. Yep. Yeah. I think that... A lot of bands could have really fucked that up. The fact that this band did it so well for for me personally, again, I think that like I, I probably still stand by what I said during the review, and I think that's my favorite Power Al song. Um, here's my problem: Coheed's all the things I just said and more. Is Static Dress <laughs> number 11? Is the gloom I in the corner in the right think spot? The gloom in the corner are ultimately in the wrong spot. Because realistically, we've, I, I think they did, I think they're the best example of that innovation that we've talked about this entire episode. Okay. And I also think they're probably the best example of the band that's going to do it all 10 times better on the next project. Mm. I love Trinity. Similar to that Kazo album. I think there's also a couple of songs I might cut to make for a better listening experience overall. I think that one gets a little long. I think there's a couple of songs that are a little too samey. Like think of like tracks one through five. There's like one or two that are kind of identical. I just want to see what it looks like. Keep talking. And for me, I don't think static dress dropped to 11. I don't, I don't see that happening. Now this, this does look better. Fuck. This looks better. I just let, okay, hold on. Let me think about it before I do anything here because I do feel pretty strongly about the successes of Trinity. Like, do I feel as Can't strongly understate those successes? Like, do I feel as strongly about the successes of Motionless and White, for example, than I do Trinity? Like, it's this di- is the the problem is it's such a different band to come. Like the the career the the album i'm talking about who i'm willing to move is the problem it's like i'm trying to think of who who again it's like six up is locked for me it's not moving so i'm i'm looking down here and i'm like is it that band 
Like the gloom in the corner has been sitting in that spot for a little bit. I, I, am I going to immediately just drop them yeah. five spots? And there's two that haven't <laughs> been sitting there that often, that long. Um, I don't know where I'm going to go with this. Is Datura above the Hellfinds are everywhere? Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Okay, all right. Just, I, was like, I don't know why I need to take this fucking detour in the middle of it, but maybe I just—it's <laughs> it's because it you stood want to out avoid, to me and fucking bugged me. You want to avoid what what is gonna continue to get to be a more complicated conversation. I think. Mm -hmm. Um. Mm -hmm. I think Trinity. By the gloom in the corner. I think probably in I think what it's fuck. gonna fuck. I think what it I think maybe what the problem now is is that realistically it's probably motionless at eleven. It's probably gloom at nine, and I think Coheed stay right where they are. Does that sound insane? What are your favorite songs off the Motionless album? So, Werewolf is the song of the year. Werewolf really is the fucking song of the year. I'm I'm going to remember 2022 for a lot of different reasons. And at the top of my mind is going to be that Werewolf video. Just the first time I heard that song on the album. Let's start talking outside of Werewolf. Let's start talking outside of we Werewolf. We saw um, – we caught – motionless live on the trinity of terror when it came through and experiencing slaughterhouse live and getting to remember how incredible of a track that is and then revisiting it hearing it on a re-listen who's taken more chances than motionless ever period let's really get now into are it you argue <laughs> let's really bro. fucking get into it like who's taking more fucking chances than motionless almost they, they almost took chances like at their detriment to get to this point I feel like there is a a a, a litter of motionless and white songs, of of like little mutated ugly motionless and white songs that 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 exist just so we could have perfect little motionless and white baby songs. <laughs> you know what I'm like? We had to experiment to get here, and and I think it's worth keeping that in mind. You're saying uh, don't go uncovering the secrets of the motionless and white I lab. I feel like I feel like I keep saying motionless put out a metalcore record this year, and that is unequivocally wrong. <laughs> they put out a motionless and white record, and nothing on here is like that. I'm, all, I'm now. Well, I'm starting yeah. to think motionless is too low. Now I'm starting to think motionless is is the. The fruits of labor that have taken a decade to get to. Like, like, this band does so many insanely different things. And maybe there are things other bands have also done, but they're all housed under the same album. And they're arguably the best versions of those things. Motionless said, sure, have a metalcore song. It's Slaughterhouse with Brian Garris. Motionless said, sure, have an Octane core song. It's Cyberhex. Motionless said, here's another couple ballads. <laughs> Motionless said, here's a fucking epic closer with Mick Gordon. Motionless said... Motionless said everything. So... And they said it, and they fucking whispered it in my ear. Motionless said, do you want to live deliciously here? I've come around on Beartooth. <laughs> We're not even talking about Beartooth. What are you talking about right and now? I think that Caleb Shomo has had some of the greatest features somehow of oh, all this time. this is coming down to a song. This is wild. This is coming right down now. to fucking Boomstick or whatever the fuck that song it's, was called. I, I it's Red, White, and Boom or something like yeah. that. And on re-listen, that one is so jarring for me that it it pulls me straight out of an album that I had had an immensely great time with. And granted, they pull you right back in with the the fucking title track, 
straight at the end. But when I, I look at the albums surrounding it, like I look at Polyphia, look at Static Dress. I even look at Pal Royale. And the problem I have is none of those songs pull me out of the experience the way that one of the Motionless and White songs do. But I, I also think 10 is too low. And I think that you if you're making one of the most stop. <laughs> you can't make moves without my permission. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This so okay. I so think it's some for, fuck shit that we talk Trinity out of ten. All right. For because no other band home, for no, other band, home, no other band. No other band no other no other band pulled features specifically to voice characters. <laughs> Like every other bit, like Motionless said, hey, wouldn't it be cool if Brian Garris was on a song? Gloom of the Corner said, ahem. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, no more Mr. Dice Guy. <laughs> Get no heat off the top 10. Not over my Motionless. I can't see that happening, Sam. Mm -hmm. Why? <laughs> very damn well could be a better album but i know for damn sure it doesn't have better highs than motionless does and i think that's a good argument actually in this instance i think that in every other instance that could be a stupid argument i don't think it's a good argument in this instance unless you're willing to fucking die for coheed right now i'm not because there's an album on here i'm willing to die for but it is so funny that <laughs> and it's our it's it been in the top 10 so i haven't even had is, to do anything to get it definitely there. been motionless and coheed that have moved around the most this episode <laughs> the thing is is that I, I i think the thing with coheed is that it's not fair for me to lay my experience on you as your experience as well. And I had a good experience with it. Don't get me wrong. But both of us can agree that we thoroughly outside of one singular track, think that motionless album is a ton of fucking fun. Now, I think moving higher than 10 for motionless would be incorrect. At this point might be incorrect. For me, that would be very incorrect. We're going to go ahead and italicize motionless. I think we should run down the 10 to 20 again. All right. So we can trade. We can trade. Fairly, fairly hard locked at this point. Score at number 10, scoring the end of the world by motionless and white, followed by Vaxis 2, A Window of the Waking Mind by Coheed and Cambria, Detora by Boston Manor. Hell Finds You Everywhere by Thousand Below. Self-titled by Pool Kids. Celebrity Therapist by the Callous Dowboys. Techno by Electric Callboy. Future Lovers by Banks Arcade. The Unraveling of Pup the Band by Pup. Good Grief by 93 Feet of Smoke. New Breed by Kazo. I might end up listening to Good Grief by 93 Feet of Smoke more than every other album on this list. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I think... So, you... <sighs> fuck me. I actually, you know what, I'm going to be honest with you. I think this 10 to 20 is perfect. It, it, it's exactly the way it should look for me. Yeah. I'm pretty content yeah, with that. I think moving things around at this stage trivial. is trivial. At, at this stage for the 10 to 20. Now, 1 to 9. <laughs> Fuck. Okay, so I'm going to throw some things at you. Sure. Heroin at two feels like a lot. <laughs> you're right. And again, I'm going to go ahead whoa, and... Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, Margo, slow down, listen, slow you're down. right. Let me, no, let me you're, talk about it. Let me talk through it. Let me talk through just, it. You just like, I, you've really talked me into it. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and put heroin at one, and then we can really start to have this discussion. <laughs> All right, what were you trying to say? Um, I think that <sighs> this definitely looks wrong for the record. <laughs> for the record, this does look wrong. We're not walking away from this episode with what you've constructed for that one through 10. Um, I think heroin's a little high. I don't know if I'd put it at two. I think heroin can climb as high as three and as low as six for me personally. 
I don't disagree. <sighs> Heroin is such a fucking bizarre album because on paper, I hate it. In practice, <laughs> it's like one of the most addictive records I've heard all year. Touched on it briefly last episode. This one benefited immensely from the re-listen, which is, again, that's always kind of like the intention. That's why we go back and check these albums out. I did partially expect to write it off. Like, you know, it, it, it's been fun humoring the idea of having heroin in the top 20 albums of 2022 this year. Press play on this album, expecting it to kind of gracefully bow out. Right, this fucking for shoegazy ass fucking alternative. It's all the other stuff, dude. The, the like the instrumental. Um, so, I, I forget the exact name. Something wicked comes to the rain or something. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah comes right. to the rain. Um, ultimately, before it, it just keeps fucking like mutating and transforming over the course of the album by the by the point that you're on like the the closing two tracks and it's it's still the same thornhill that you got familiar with on track one but like it's so much crazier than that and it's it's evolved so much from that point and on. also we're talking about a band's like second record and it sounds you couldn't even fucking comp like it's not even the same band from their last record three records okay all right okay. well 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 Relax. you look at the third record of their career bad omens is at three two and, and their first two records are not even this band but this band is almost in a complete left turn Better than those bands could have ever wished to be if they had continued on the same trajectory. I just like, I am so fucking awash with like uh, positive emotion for heroin in a way that definitely counters the rest of the records on this list. It's... So Sam, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I want to, yeah, I just want to yeah, kind of break down the timeline else? of significant events that have happened throughout the course of this episode. Sure, yeah, yeah. You lead with telling me that The Death of Peace of Mind is the album of the year. Yeah. And then you tell me that Pain Remains is not only going to be your album of the year, but it's the greatest deathcore album of all time. Mm. To where we are now, which is you've slotted in Heroin by Thornhill at number one. And granted, like, the, the visceral reaction that I, I thought that would elicit out of me over time isn't there. <laughs> and I don't hate that. <laughs> but I, I think I would be lying to you right now if I told you that I, I put it at number one or number two. I think again, I, I think I'm still at three and six. The hardest so so I sort of talked a little bit about having to look outside of myself with an album like Coheed to allow it not to be where I want it to be. Multiply that by a thousand for Thornhill. Th that is the album for me. I I can't explain it, but Heroin by Thornhill is is some like level of artistry that is just like unbelievably like like it it, it just speaks to me in a way that like I, I compl un, un completely unpredictable way that I I just could never imagine a record like this hitting me the way that Heroin hit me. It's like. You can pitch to me any of these other records, and I'd be like, yeah, that's kind of my vibe. You pitch to me heroin, I'd be like, I'm going to fucking hate it. <laughs> but I look at heroin, and I'm like, it might be my favorite record of the year. I think I need to get a little bit away from up top and say that seven, eight, and nine for me feel correct. I just don't know if they're necessarily in the right spot. I think Rogue Carpet Disaster by Static Dress, Fever Dream by Palo Royale, and Trinity by The Gloom in the Corner, whether they're at seven, eight, or nine, need to be between seven, eight, and nine. I agree. If you started to compare the albums with one another, is there anything you would shift around? If I'm being real with you, I wouldn't. But you brought up a good thing, Sam. <laughs> you brought up the fact yeah. that the gloom in the corner outsourced their their grand vision. They they outsourced artists to come in and voice the characters that exist within the universe that they have sculpted. And I'm coming back around on the seven for for Trinity.
insane for Trinity to fall. Uh, but now, out but, of now the top you, 10. but now that you move it, but now that you move it, uh, insane for Trinity to fall out of the top 10. So we could eventually <laughs> talk ourselves into the exact same spot they were in earlier. Almost maybe I, speaks volumes I, to not touch that. Are, are so far is it the bands that survived the uh the dunk into the the bottom 20 are motionless power real gloom because i don't think static ever fell out technically yes and technically, nothing from yes. the top six ever did so i think power my Royale question is to in the you right spot. my question to you then is is static is it dress. static dress it's actually at seven and is it the three no. that that survived that? Mm, yeah, mm. Fuck. I I I I I I I almost defer to you here because I really it almost doesn't matter to me at this spot. Like I can see the 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 argument for all three of these records shifting. I just can't see them shifting out of this seven, eight, and nine spot. So if I look at if I look at only them. And I had to pick my favorites of all these records. I would probably say that, yes, Static Dress is my favorite, personally, in a way that I would move them. But I also would maybe arguably put Palo Royale above the glue of the quarter, if that's how we were looking <laughs> at this as And we just end well. up right back where we were, and I think that's probably where I sit, too. Yeah, if we're, if we're you, just talking, like, if we had to, yeah. like, start to get, like, like we really got to start fucking splitting hairs on, like, what album am I having the best time with? It's It's exactly like that. Yeah, I think that's locked. I see one album we haven't talked a whole bunch about this episode yet. Yeah, I know what you mean. Dark Sun. It's almost like you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying locked at five? It's just like... So so I'll say something. I don't think this falls out of five for me. Okay. Out of the top five. Dark Sun for me is in sort of the same conversation as the death of peace of mind in that those albums sound like the best representation of what the scene should sound like moving forward. Like they should be poster childs for what everybody else considers a point of reference. I think, right. Whether it's their inspiration think, or directly their influence. I always think back to the days where going into like brick and mortar stores was a thing. And you actually went out and picked out a physical CD and you cashed out with it and all that shit. And I always intentionally read those stickers asking Alexandria for fans of under oath and attack attack and all these blah, 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 mm -hmm. whatever's it's because bands like under oath and attack attack were um trailblazers trailblazers and i think now both day seeker and bad omens have ascended there and, and and there's bands like i think like lauren shore like they're on every death course sticker if this is 2009 and and devil is broad is still it's a metalcore album but bad omens and day seeker are the new blood in the sense that like bands weren't taking inspiration from them before now those are two bands that have completely reinvented the wheel, not their own wheel, the wheel. I think that says a lot. And then there's Polyphia, who's actually the most talented band on this fucking list. Mm -hmm. So why are they at six? And then if we're talking about just the core of like an album that I'll listen to at every song is exactly what I want it to be. It's Color Decay by the Devil Wears Prada. And then my gut tells me it's the death of peace of mind, which is the most innovative album this year by a fucking mile. But it's also Polyphia. Because credit where credit's fucking due, no one could write Remember That You Will Die on this fucking... Okay. I think, I think that I think my argument for Thrill is essentially that it is an absolutely incredible album, but not in all of the ways that I think these are incredible albums. 
Maybe. Additionally, I think whatever's next from Thornhill might be the fucking shining example. Agree completely, but what's fucked up is that you almost look at you a lot of these bands. You can make for all these bands, I know. Like, man, what the fuck would be the next bad album? What's going to slow like, fucking Devil Wears Prada down at this point? They keep right. getting better. What, like, what, what could Lorna Shore do next, right? We, there was no deathcore ballad <laughs> six months ago. There wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> and, man... Man, this is actually quick question for you. Yeah, let me hear it. I'm playing around a little bit, but go yeah, ahead. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, so right now, just for for audio listeners, Thornhill's dropped down to six. Day Seeker <laughs> are back at five. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Well, I think maybe the note here is that Polyphia has moved up a couple spots. Yeah, so at number four at four right now. Polyphia's at four. Um, Whoa. <laughs> Whoa now. Sam's getting a little creative. Whoa, <laughs> pal. Slow down. Um I'm not ready to lock Dayseeker in the way I'm ready yeah. to rock, lock Thornhill in. I just want everyone to know, want... and it might sound fucking insane, but I, I, I think, I think any other year, if we were doing this separately, I might have put Thornhill at my one, and, and I almost, I just need to say it out loud because I think there's fuck shit that both of us would have done, and I think somehow I would have ended up with Static Dress as my one. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that there, there is, there's an uh, obviously a, a collaborative list. There's, there's got to be some deferring to common ground that takes place, or else this could go on for days. Yeah. bro slow down what are you doing to me i'm just I'm, all right i don't know like, yo i'm just thinking about, the fuck out i'm just thinking about the argument we made for day seeker being like the purveyor of the forward thinking nature of like what the alternative scene could be moving forward and color decay is 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 not that it is i think in a lot of ways everything that has come before it it's just an extremely well done version of it. Like extremely well done. But but I think if Sam, the Devil Wears that... Prada is almost the electric cowboy of the top ten. We're like that's an album I'm gonna go back and revisit again because it speaks directly to the type of music that I could so easily fall into. You know what I mean? But it's not boundary pushing the same way I think these four albums up top are. Color Decay is the greatest metalcore album of all fucking time, Sam. How nitpicky do you want to get? Is it better than fucking every Bring Me the Horizon album? <laughs> no, 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 like, no, no, how did, no, 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 you no, said no, all time. No, you no, said, you no. said what all I, time. What I screwed up, what I screwed up when I said that <laughs> was it is the best. When I close my eyes and picture metalcore album of all time, like metalcore, you know, like, like day seeker, <laughs> I guess dark sun's maybe not a metalcore album, but like it's not. I think of bands like um, Fit for a King, like Moths to Flames, Invent, Dan like all these types of bands that like, the, like they're they're I don't think they're ever gonna get as, as, ambitious isn't the right word, because I think that if if Color Decay is anything, it is ambitious, but I think it is, it is the the perfection of of a genre metalcore straight metalcore no chaser color decay is the best representation and i know you could get wild and you'd be like okay so what about like new demons by icy stars not metalcore in its purest form metalcore salt of the earth metalcore couple miles underground mind straight off the fucking earth's core metalcore I don't know. Color Decay is the know. best representation I of that. No. 
I don't know if I'm willing to go. I think if this was my own personal list. I I said I would have got like a little fuck crazy with it. Like real carpet disaster number one. That's probably not it. I think I would have gone again with what I said earlier, which is my heart color decay. My gut death of peace of mind. That's okay. But I don't think that's the proper argument for one to four. I think that's the proper argument for five. Fuck me. But I think I I don't disagree with what you're trying to say about being a perfect encapsulation of what you want from a metalcore record. And like getting that in 2022 is kind of crazy, but maybe not surprising that so, we got it from a band like Prada. So who, the thing the that's thing always about, been very good. So that's the thing. At some point, I kind of disregarded Double Wars Prada. You had the act in your top 10. No, 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 no. This is before then. Like, suddenly we were into, like, the Transit Blue era and Transit Blues era. And, like, and even, like, the the 818 and and even the, the, the fucking the Supernova EP, whatever, the Space EP. Love the Space EP. For me personally. And I'm on an island. I... I came to a point with the Devil Wears Prada. I was like, okay, well, Prada's probably never going to be my favorite band of ever again. And now it's 2022. The act has come out. Uh, Zombie 2 has released. Color Decay is back. And and honestly, Sam, I look at the Devil Wears Prada. And, and they excite me more than any band on this list not named Bad Omens. Like I, I love what Dayseeker's doing. I, I obviously love what Lorna Shore's doing. Thornhill, Polyphia, but like, and it's a similar argument to like Static Dress, where like, <laughs> Color Decay kind of made me fall back in love with music. I, 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 I think very, back to when I, you first heard Salt, first heard Time. I'm not telling you you have to move it. I'm just, I'm just seeing what it looks like. Argument. I'm just seeing what it looks like. I'm seeing how I feel about a list when I look at it, right? I don't think... I think I'm fairly confident I'm not going to end up moving Bad Omens at this point. I just really don't think... I, I, give, I, give me more of your thought process for Lorna Shore. I just like... like, like, like all right, let's... Then the non-obvious stuff okay. is what I mean. What do you mean like, the non Okay, so like, greatest metal core like, record yeah, like in I know, history. I know Lorna Shore, like, they're fucking exciting suddenly, right? And that's a must-see show. And that's same as Bad Omens. It's why that fucking headliner sold out straight away. But they're... Okay, and hear me, I, this hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Me, hear me this out. This isn't me. Um, hear me out. I have one. I have a point. I have a okay, point. Okay, but I'm just telling you, I'm not being combative in the sense that I need you to to explain why they're at number two. I just want to hear more of your thoughts. We've on talked about it all year. Every other band in Deathcore is chasing one band. Yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> you saw Lord of Shore's influence completely flood a genre from bands that have been around forever to new ones coming in on the scene. Lorna Shore's influence on the entirety of a genre is felt and and we both know it because we've spoken it aloud every three weeks for this whole <laughs> fucking year. If not from the moment Will Ramos stepped into front this band. Why did I say that earlier, bro? I think that Band Remains is a better album. I don't know what I was on. It's just like, I, I know what you mean, that there's like some really satisfying moments at the top of fucking immortal that are just like, a, th th that's like fucking candy for me in terms of like the, hitting the notes that I really fucking enjoy in a the, deathcore the song. The slight problem is that this is revolutionary. Immortal had like, they, they, it just like the rest of Lorna just started introducing like all of that symphonic shit in, in such a way that it became an, like a, like one of the defining elements of their sound that for me, like, 
it it does slightly take away from what the band's been able to accomplish with the EP and the album. But the more you talk me through it, like you're right. Everyone at this point is chasing Lorna Shore. It is. It's so undeniable. I think the same people are doing it with uh, Devil Wears Prada, though, with Metalcore. I'm not saying to, I'm not arguing for number two. I'm just saying, like, in the same way that I think that I think that three is people are currently chasing bad omens. If you're a new up and coming band trying to establish whatever the fuck you want your sound to be. If you're in Deathcore. It's Lorna Shore who you're trying to emulate. And I feel like it's it's probably Prada who you're trying to emulate from a strictly metalcore side. The crazy thing about Bad Omens is I feel like they're bringing me the horizon and they're always going to be six years ahead of every other band in the city. Like bands are going to sound like the death of peace of mind six years years from from now. now. Yeah. 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 That's when it'll fucking like, that's when they'll get their shit together enough. And by then Bad Omens will be so far ahead of them <laughs> in the same way that Bring Me the Horizon always feels like they're six steps ahead of everybody else. And they felt that way their whole fucking career. I love one and two. I'm willing to talk about three, four, and five. <sighs> I think. I think if we're talking about <laughs> somehow the three most complete albums on this list, it's Pain Remains, Color Decay, and Dark Sun. And then obviously the, the Death of Peace of Mind tries some fucking things. And so does Remember That You Will Die. And I feel like with Polyphia, there's a pretty strong argument to pull them over Dayseeker. But I think Dark Sun's a more complete experience. And that's kind of why I like them at four. And it's kind of why I can't see Polyphia climbing any higher. Thoughts? The only move I would make here... I I don't have a move that I'm confident in. I can... I can... I can visualize a, a shift here. I, I could see Dayseeker at three. I could see Polyphia at four. I could see Prada at five. I could see them exactly as they are. I I don't know that I feel strongly enough one way or another to really push a change here. Can I can I suggest a lock at this point? Yeah. Because I think you've convinced me. I think Pain Remains gets locked at two. Uh, I don't see it, and, and then one. obviously, Bad Omens gets locked at one, right? Because because we haven't done it. Well, or... I didn't want to like. I didn't want to like fucking. Listen, listen. It's not if if for me personally, if Pain Remains isn't bumping it, nobody else is. Except potentially Heroin by Thordell, but I'm not going to get into it. Polyphia and Thornhill. The problem here for me is that I don't think Dayseeker falls out of five. And I also hate Thornhill at six. And Sam, I'm not going to budge on Color Decay. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. I just like, l- 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 listen, you're fucking transported. When you listen to that fucking Thornhill record, you're fucking transported. You're in whatever fucking fully formed atmosphere that captures the feeling that Thornhill is trying to capture for the entirety of that record. And it never feels dull and it, and it, and it's always surprising. And, and I think and it, and it comes from a band that I, I just didn't, I couldn't in my head, visualize as like being capable of this on the basis of what of theirs I had heard before Polyphia remains very good. I think, I think at this point in a, a, I think at the five is one through five is where the listening experience flexes out the talent of an individual band. 
I can consume Polyphia in any way that I want. It doesn't matter if I listen to it back to front. What are we doing, bro? If the argument you're making right now is the listening experience, then Prada's yours and Thornhill is mine. Cl closing thoughts with Polyphia. Then I think that I think Polyphia is locked out of five at number six, and I think that is, that is what six should look like moving forward. I agree. Now, I again feel like there's a potential discussion to be had in the three to five still. In that, I can also see Dayseeker at three, and our yeah. and our babies at four and five. <laughs> Because I still think that Dayseeker is a hair away from the exact argument that we're making for the death of peace of mind. And I don't think there's a better vocalist than Rory in the top 10. Um, Polyphia's vocalist, you're really gonna, <laughs> you're really gonna, <laughs> this is an unexpected shade. Um, I, I think the only, so realistically what you mean is. Polyphia's uh, at three or five for Cause, me and cause I don't Will, know how to, I don't know Ramos how to Ramos is a better it. screamer than anyone on this list, obviously. Okay, uh, yes, you're right. But fair, besides fair maybe point. like fucking Mike, um. I can't believe you I, just you, you you just fucking shoved Chris Motionless <laughs> off the fucking boat like that. <laughs> so like, how quickly we forget <laughs> the most influential of metalcore vocalists. Right. Um, is Motionless too fucking low? No, on don't start list? with me. I'm not doing this with you. We're not. Okay. Um, Dayseekers somehow at three or five. <laughs> and you're not a four, no. You you are. Ron and Thornhill are moving up or down together, and and I won't I won't hear arguments to to the alternative. But I I feel a lot of ways that Prada is the third record of the year, for me. And Thornhill is the fourth record of the year for me, and Dayseeker comes right after them. I think that might be where I'm at. And that's, and that's now, now, now we've, we've gotten like to, to a personal level on how we feel about that. And honestly, Marcos, I think we have our list. I'm going to let you glance at it real quick. I'm going to read it. Up. No, I'm going to let you glance at it and then we'll read it from 20 to one. If you think it's lockable. Just take a look at it. Just drink it in a little bit. I think we've got our list. I think this is the list. Marcus, if you don't mind, I'll do the honors. Yep. At number 20, New Breed by Kezo. Flash. I lost my mind. I got this hole in my head. Can't seem to find the answers why I'm so fucked. That's a suicide. At number 19, Good Grief by 93 Feet of Smoke. She left me roses. Cause I didn't notice. It's the ones who hold it closest. That you gotta watch the most. It's a blessing in the curse, but I can't be the first to know. At number 18, The Unraveling of Pup the Band by Pup. At number 17, Future Lovers by Banks Arcade. I'm just trying to keep my head up, hope they don't forget us, pull up fucking black At 
at 16 techno by electric callboy At 15, Celebrity Therapist by the Callous Dowboys. At 14, Self Titled by Pool Kids. I never know if I'm getting straight answers. At 13, Hell Finds You Everywhere by Thousand Below. At 12, Detura by Boston Manor. We fight for everything we have. I'm sick of eating all your scraps. I wish I wasn't as hungry as I am. At 11, Vaxus 2, A Window of the Waking Mind by Coheed and Cambria. At number 10, Scoring the End of the World by Motionless and White. At 9, Trinity by The Gloom in the Corner. At eight, Fever Dream by Palo Royale. Give me more complaints. You're real, I'm just a face. I'll wake up, I'm so glad. I can't be, I'm pushing back. Go on, make my day. Go At seven, Rogue Carpet Disaster by Static Dress. At six, remember that you will die by Polyphia. At five, Dark Sun by Dayseeker. Four, Heroin by Thornhill. At three, Color Decay by The Devil Wears Prada. Two, Pain Remains by Lorna Shore. And the number one album of 2022 is The Death of Peace of Mind by Bad Omens, which was also 
the fan voted number one album of the year. And that's our top 20 albums of 2022. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Again, leave us five stars. Follow us on socials to keep up. Subscribe everywhere and be ready for the next episode when we return in 2023. But there might be some surprises in between. Thank you, as always, for listening. And good fucking blith. (laughs) 